St. John's family and friends, this is Pastor Brady, and this is our online Sunday School Together for Sunday, February 7th, 2021. It's another snowy day out there, another snowy Sunday, but as we gather together, we do so in the warmth of the Holy Spirit, no matter where we gather from. So if you're joining us for the first time, we have an online Sunday School offering um, that is each week. 9.20 a.m. Um, it, it is streamed live on Facebook, then it's sent to our YouTube page and also in our church email link. If you'd like to be on that church email link, just contact the church office throughout the week. We also have in-person Sunday school that meets socially distanced in our gathering room each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And then we have our praise and worship service, which is in-person only at 10 a.m. And then I hope you join us at 10.30 a.m. for our online worship service. But our online Sunday school, we have been studying the Psalms. We've been doing so in fall and in winter, and we continue doing that today. And I encourage anyone that tunes in um, to have a good study Bible with you uh, so that you can look at the context, so that you can dive into the Word deeper, because that's that's what Sunday school, that's what Bible studies are all about. It's about going back to the Word. It's about each time you read it, finding something new. And the Psalms have really been speaking to me, and I think to those that watch online, or when we do have this Sunday school um, in person as well. Um, I think if you read the Psalms recently, you can really apply them to our current times. And you could always do that before, but maybe it's taken more extreme circumstances for us to see how God was speaking through the Psalms. And we know the Psalms are applied to music, they're like poetry at times, and they were done like that on purpose so people would remember, remember what they had to say. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago we, we read the 100th Psalm, which is so often used at Thanksgiving. Last week we focused, you know, on a Psalm that taught us to reflect on what God had done for us, to remember, and then to change how we live in that remembrance, to change our lives, to live better. Because in that song last week, we were learning all about how the Israelites had gone through all these struggles, but God had always delivered them. Well, our song today is going to be about the fact that God is always good. Everything that God does is good. Now, I know right now in the world, you're thinking, did God do some of these things? Or did God let these things happen? Okay, number one, the pandemic, right? You know, wars, famines, divisions among people, all the things that we can turn on the news and see, and, and we don't like what we see. We don't like what's happening in the world, what's happening to our country. We don't like these changes. We don't think they're for the better. And we see these things, and we worry. What happens? We become fearful. We become uncertain. Dedicated to something. You know, what do we 
have a reference for in our world. It seems so often that we're consumed by what we can get. We're consumed by quick satisfaction, quick gratification. Gratification, you know, what we're esteemed by others. What can we purchase? How do we look good? Those kinds. How do I come out on top? It seems to be what our world's all about. And I would say that's a big lack of reverence for what's truly important. And that's having reverence for God first, above all else. Today in worship, we're going to talk about getting our priorities in order. We're going to talk about what the priorities of Jesus were and how we need to reflect those priorities in our lives. And we start with having reverence for God. And when we have reverence for God, that's when all wisdom flows unto us via the Holy Spirit and when we get into the Word and when we set around ourselves with other believers. I know that's hard right now, but we can still surround ourselves with other believers. We have the technology. We can use that technology for good to connect with one another. And hopefully, sooner rather than later, people will be able to come back to church, back to Bible studies, back to Sunday school. The question is, will they make that choice to have reverence for the things that are important and for God, or will they choose to just stay out there in the world? Because what's out in the world, a whole lot of bad stuff, a whole lot of evil, a whole lot of problems. But God is good all the time. So today, the word of the Lord comes to us from the 111th Psalm. If you have a Bible with you, pull it out. If you're watching online, I remind you, get a good Bible that has the context, that tells you the authorship, you know, the time period it was written, and the reason it was written. Today, the author is anonymous. We're reminded that many of the Psalms we attribute to David or the Levite priests. But today, we're not sure of the author. But boy, the words speak true. The 111th Psalm. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all of my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious he provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Last week's song that we did was, was long and detailed. This one's more compacted. It's all about praise. But it, it contains some of the things that we read last week, you know. And we're going to go through it and touch upon them. Those things that God did and the things we need to remember he did. And that applies to the Israelites. But last week we talked about how we need to remember beyond what he did for the Israelites. What did he do for us? Jesus Christ. The greatest gift of all. Salvation, redemption, forgiveness of sins. See the trouble in the world out there? He gives us the escape. But not just when we die and go to heaven. He can give you that escape right now. Remember, he, everything he does is in righteousness and uprightness. He is always faithful. He is always true, is what the psalmist tells us. He always keeps his covenant. Remember, we talked a lot about covenant last week. He kept his covenant with the Israelites. Through all generations, he keeps his covenant to us. All we have to do is trust. Say, Lord, I believe in you. I believe in your righteous way and, and put our lives in his hands. That doesn't mean that the evil out there won't attack us. That doesn't mean that we won't stumble. It doesn't mean that God's always there to 
fix up, to hold us up, to help us carry through, to help us overcome. And we have to remember that. We have to hold him in reverence for who he is. And true wisdom, as the psalmist tells us, comes from God. True understanding. Well, you might be out there saying, well, I don't understand what's going on in the world. Heck, I don't understand some of the scriptures we read. I have a lot of questions for God. Guess what? We all have a lot of questions for God. We're always trying to figure out what's out there. Remember that? The words, be still my soul. Sometimes we need to take that to heart a little more. Because we're always going to have questions. Our hearts are always going to be stirring. Our minds at times will be racing. Let God settle. I'm not telling you that just because you turn to his wisdom, you're going to know everything you need to know in the world. Actually, you are going to know everything you need to know because you're going to know him. You just may not know all the details yet. One day, we'll see him face to face. One day, we'll have that full understanding just as in Corinthians it says he already has that full understanding of us. We're fully known, even as we only know ourselves, really, one day we'll know. But for now, let our, let our hearts be still. Let us look to God's wisdom because He is about love. He's about justice. He's about grace. He's about hope for the future, even in the midst of the storms around us, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst, in the midst of death, disease, famine, and war. Just like in the past, He was there. Just like you have held and kept his covenant with the Israelites even when they turned away from him. Yes, they were punished, but he redeemed them. In the world now, look around. How are we punishing ourselves? We're out there saying, there's not a lot of goodness in this world. God can't be that good. He's letting these things happen. Have we ever looked in the mirror and thought, perhaps we help to cause some of these things by our own actions? our own inactions, by judging others, by living so, so suspicious of our neighbor or those that are different, instead of going forth boldly and knowing that God's there to back you up. I think it's hard for Christians to live in today's world because we're afraid of what others might think. We're afraid of being tested not having the right answer. The right answer is clear and simple. It's always Jesus Christ. You don't have to know all the scriptures or all the details or all the things to back up what you're saying. All you have to know is your God loves you and redeems you, even though you're not worthy. You can take that message forth, living in the Holy Spirit and praying and turning to God every day. That's true wisdom. That's true understanding. Let's look at the word. The first few verses are simply about praise. It says, Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. I take that to mean, how should we apply it? We need to praise the Lord always. Not just in church, not just in Sunday school, not just in a Bible study, not just when we're surrounded by like minded people other Christians, other believers, but in all that we do, how do our lives reflect the Lord? How are they a praise unto the Lord? How do we extol the Lord? Be thinking this week, what am I doing in my actions? What am I doing with my words and even my thoughts that are praiseworthy of the God that loves me so much and has redeemed? Verse 2, it continues, telling us what the Lord has done. Great are the works of the Lord, and they are pondered by all who delight in them. Now today in worship, we're going to hear a scripture about the Lord delighting in us. How he's the one that truly loves us, and we need to be seeking him out. He's the one that renews our soul. He's the one that delights in us. So as the scripture asks, says here, do we delight in him? Is that where we find our delight? Are we excited to be a believer? Are we 
excited that our lives are secure about what our God has done? Or are we just going through the motions? Because if we're just going through the motions, we're not truly delighted in the world, we're probably trying to find our delight out there, away from God, away from His wisdom. We're trying to make our own delight. We're trying to manufacture it. Well, the delights that are out there, the ways of the world, quickly go away. God is forever. His righteousness endures. His faithfulness is forever. So turn to Him and to His wisdom. Find the light of the one that already delights so much in you, that knows everything about me, that loves you so much. He's your best friend. He's your heavenly Father. He's your Savior. He's, he's your everything. Find your delight in Him. Glorious and majestic are his deeds. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. In the fourth verse there, you know, we're reminded of the psalm we looked at last week uh, that told us of, of the things God did for the Israelites that they needed to remember, you know, that he brought them out of Egypt. Well, we have the Holy Bible. We have something that those first Christians, those first believers didn't have. It gives us complete accounts of many miracles, of many righteous deeds of the Father in the Old Testament and through Jesus, his healing power, and his love for us in the New Testament. And as the apostles continued to take the message of Jesus forth, there's such a testimony in the Holy Bible. Why are we not looking to those testimonies more? Why are we not looking to the scriptures more and applying them more to our lives? Because if we do, then we won't be asking that question so much. What has God done good lately? What is the goodness of the Lord? Because it's truly all around us. And then we'll be able to see the miracles that are around us more clearly when we understand and look back at what God has already done. So much for his people. Yes, his wonders are remembered. We must remember them. He provides for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. What does it mean to fear God? I don't think it means what you think initially when you hear that word fear. It means we know who he is. We recognize him. We have reverence for him. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. I think too many are walking around out there and they don't treat God in that way. God's there when I need him. I'll go pray to God when something bad happens. I'll run into church and pray today because, oh, my life is a mess. But the next ten months, I won't go near a church. Those are the attitudes that exist among many, if not majority, of Christians, ones who claim to believe today. That's not what we're called to be. We're called to remember. And we're called to have reverence and fear for a God that is that mighty and powerful. A God that can do all goodness in your life, but a God, if you are without Him, and if you turn away from Him, don't expect goodness. Don't expect a happy end. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. We're reminded there that he delivered the Israelites into Canaan, a place that wasn't theirs initially, but established his new kingdom there. He brought them out of Egypt. He did great things for his people, helped them defeat the opposing armies. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. There's something that's hard in this world. Who do you trust? What message do you trust? You can't trust the news. You can't trust Facebook. Heck, you can't trust people. They may be called your great friends. Just because we're all imperfect. So why not trust the one that is perfect? Put your life in his hands. Trust him always. 
They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. We didn't even know all the names for God or for Jesus. We didn't say God, Yahweh. We didn't say Holy Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Messiah, or Jesus. Emmanuel, any of these names. If all we knew was that he was holy and awesome, that would be a great description for the goodness and the greatness of who our God is. Do we treat him like that as believers? Do we realize how holy he is? Do we realize how awesome he is? Do we realize the awesome things he can do in our lives today? We sang that song last week, Our God is an Awesome God.
Then we find the true understanding of the Almighty's enough. If you're out there and you're confused, if you're out there and you're feeling lost, even if you are a believer, it's okay. God's always there. He's always welcoming us in. And today is a good day as any to start to understand who you are by understanding who your God is, by praising Him and by seeking out His wisdom. Let us pray. God, we are thankful for the Psalms. They teach us not just what life was like for the Israelites and how they interacted with you, but how life is now and how we need to have praise for you, reverence for you. How we need to have full understanding and the only way we do that is by looking to you. The world is full of pain, and for many it's hard to look and find the goodness, your goodness, around them, even for the believer, even for the Christian. So Lord, help us now. Let our souls be still. Let us meditate upon who you are. Let your love come into us. Let us be renewed. Let us delight in you, and let us take message to our brothers and sisters in this age where so much is about me, me, me. May we make it all about you, you, you. And in doing so, change the hearts, minds, and souls of so many that are struggling, so many that are lost, so many that are hopeless. Lord, we thank you for your holy word today. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you'll join us at 10.30 for holy worship today. May God bless you all.